Alrighty guys, can you hear me alright? I get used to this the, uh, little mic thing. <laughs> can you hear me? Phil with two L's is in the house. Howdy buddy, welcome along. Craig Mad Kiwi is in the house. Just uh, getting everything sorted out. Let me know in the chat, guys. Oh, we don't want that trial. We'll get rid of that one. <laughs> Let me know in the chat, guys, that you can hear me. Jade's Adventures is in the house. Jade, welcome along, buddy. You been out chasing gold this weekend? EDC, Middleman and Plains. Yo, you've changed your name, buddy. All good here. Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh... EDC, Middleman and Planes. Hey Chris, how are you mate? I've been so busy with metal detecting and doing my live streams at Auckland Airport because I'm doing plane spotting as well on my channel. Ah, oh, you must have changed your name EDC because I'm not getting any um, not getting any alerts to say that you're going live or doing anything buddy. Haven't seen you. Um, I'll have to check there. I'll have to check my channel about metal detecting shorts videos. And cool bananas. Well done. And um, Mad Kiwi's already guessing some numbers already. <laughs> and he's got lag already. <laughs> Classic, buddy. Classic. I love it. Got to get in early, don't you? Hey, Digger Mike is in the house. What's up, bro? How you doing? Hey, Cyclops Stacks is in the house. All the way from overseas. And Joshua Svensson's in the house. I thought you were going out for a sneaky swing tonight. <laughs> Obviously, um, going out a bit later, are you? G'day, Jacob. 1556. Welcome along. Hope you've all had a pretty cool week. Um, mine's been fairly, yeah, fairly quiet and non-eventful this, uh, this week. G'day, David. Welcome along, buddy. And Mandy Brown. Welcome back, welcome back. Just relaxing bro while I can. Hey, fair enough, Digger Mike, fair enough. Uh, you gotta take those uh, take those minutes while you can, don't you? Yeah, Cyclops, Cyclops, okay, so I haven't seen you on my stream for a while. Actually, I just saw you um, saw you uh, reply to one of my um, shorts just, just a few minutes ago, so I'll have to go and uh, reply to that. But it's nice to have you guys here. I know it's some ridiculous hour over there, like one or two o'clock in the morning. So, hey, thanks for taking your time out to, to come along and, and say good day. Um, gonna keep it fairly short tonight. I was, I'm, I'm going live tonight because um, I'm not gonna be around tomorrow and where I'm going is probably, um, I'm probably gonna be, no, <laughs> Mad Kiwi, he's from um, the States, mate. Kiwi and Oz, all sorts is here as well, but service is bad, so oh well, listen while you can, bro. And uh, cheers, guys, for coming in and joining me. So, um, yeah, going live tonight, and I know it probably doesn't suit everybody being a Saturday night here in New Zealand, um, but it's um, I'm heading away tomorrow afternoon to the West Coast. Uh, on a gold mission. So I'm heading off over to Moonlight Creek to a public fossicking area over there. And I'm going to do a bit of sniping. Hey Jim, MD Melbourne. Welcome along, brother. Glad to have you. I uh, hope I'm not uh, upsetting your dinner. <laughs> I know it's six o'clock over there and probably smack on dinner time, but cheers for dropping in, bro. Or you may not have even have it yet. You might be cooking it still. Digger Mike comes in with a super chat. He's looking at a uh, Massing up those uh, tokens for that knife. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey. Good job. Thanks for that. Much appreciated. Danielle Perky. Welcome along. There's a new name I haven't seen before. Welcome to my live stream. Uh, where are you from? Is it... Is it Danielle? Danielle or Danielle? Let me know. Danielle or Danielle? He has Mad Kiwi in with a uh, super chat as well. Cheers, bro. 
Oh, and Jade doesn't want to miss out either. <laughs> See what you've started, Mike. <laughs> I think at the moment we have got uh, Jade's Adventures with uh, two tokens and Digger Mike with two tokens each. So it's a bit of a head to head battle between those two at the moment Jade's Adventures and Digger Mike. Already eight, bro. Costco, baby. Back Oh, back ribs. Yum. Yeah, we had some yummy ribs on the barbecue the other night. Real good. Someone's got to start it. Chachu, brother. Thank you. So, yeah, so heading off over to the coast, going to Moonlight um, for a couple of days. Going to have two full days sniping in the river. So that's going to be real cool. I'm really looking forward to that. I might be hooking up with um, young Dylan from the Sluices. He's already over there, but his dad's coming back on Sunday. I'm heading over there on Sunday, and we might try and tee it up so we can catch up somehow um, or meet up halfway or something like that and yeah he's going to come back out with me to go detecting basically i'm, I'm guessing um i don't think he's got a wetsuit i don't think he's done any sniping yet but uh should be cool uh set it right the first time cool ah what a carry rangers mean nice up north oh welcome along brother um yeah so that's going to be a fun wee trip so hopefully i'll get a get a decent haul like I did last time. I'm going to have two full days in the river this time, not just one. So, yeah, I'm sort of aiming for, for that one and a half grams again, maybe two. We'll just <laughs> see how it goes. Uh, so what did everybody get up to over Christmas? Um, didn't really go into it last week, but really keen to know what you guys did. Just have a bit of an informal sort of a chat tonight. EDC and Plains, how's your shoulder, Chris? I'm coming to Christchurch in four weeks' time. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, shoulders okay, EDC. It's um, it's sore, it hurts, but it just, yeah, I just sort of just put it in the back of my head and just try not to try concentrate on it. Um, I've been going back to the gym, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, just doing cardio. I do half an hour on the bike and half an hour on the treadmill. So that gets the old heart going. It gets the uh, sweat pouring and the heart going. So... Certainly not going to uh, blob out and go jelly-like just because I'm sort of injured and can't do anything. I'm going to try and keep as, mo as, as mobile and physical as I can and doing some really light weights with my arms and bits and pieces as well. But, yeah, enjoying being back at the gym. But, um, yeah, no, pain-wise, pain-wise the shoulder's sweet. I have an MRI tomorrow, hence why I haven't gone away to the coast already. Um, well, the weather was meant to be pretty crap today anyway, so I sort of put it off. I was going to go yesterday, but weather was going to be yuck. Then they rang me yesterday anyway and got me to book in for an uh, MRI. So I have that on Sunday morning. And then as soon as I've had the MRI, I am off to the coast, guys. <laughs> Out here. Off like a... Off. Five ounces, you reckon, Mad Kiwi? Oh, flip. I'd retire on five ounces just about. Now, I've seen some guys get um, 20 to 25 grams up there, um, sniping over a long period of time. So with any luck, I should have a bit of uh, bit of luck. See how it goes. Uh, Hazyek Family Antics. Welcome along to the stream. Welcome back, guys. What's the weather doing your way, Crispy? It's 40 degrees here right now. Flat 40 degrees. That's nuts, bro. Um, Far out, my um, Ethan was over in, in Brisbane, Gold Coast, and he said it was pretty warm, but not 40 degrees. I think he would have melted in 40 degrees. No, we've had a nice day here, bro. Um, it's probably been 23, 24 maybe um, at its hottest. It's cooling down now. Um, we definitely don't get that same sort of heat as you, Jim. Flat. We're, none of us would be used to it over here. <laughs> Jimmy Lakari. Welcome, bro. Long time no see. Uh, hope you and the family. We are, mate. We are doing so well. It's doable. Mad Kiwi, it's doable if I was going to be there for about three or four months. <laughs> uh, the gold at Moonlight, as, as much as it is there, you've got to work pretty hard for it. And um, yeah, most guys come away with about a, a, a gram, a uh, gram or two. You've got to sort of know what you're doing, where you're looking to get the, the big hauls these days. Um, Yeah, yeah, Jade, definitely, mate, definitely. Hey, so just a quick, just a quick follow up for those who are wondering why I was writing names down at the beginning there. Um, 
I do two end of stream draws for patrons and YouTube members, um, of which you can become either either or during the during the stream. Although, to be honest, guys, I prefer um, you, you, you went patron membership. Uh, YouTube have just brought another thing in that um, I had to sign and agree on the other day. And basically, they are now, they're changing all the rules. They're going to monetize shorts um, here in New Zealand. But uh, YouTube memberships are down to 55%. I only get 55% of what you pay for YouTube shorts, whereas I get about 97%. Of all Patreon memberships, so if you want to become a member, guys, um, don't do the the YouTube membership. Spend a couple of extra bucks a month and go with the Patreon. You get way more, way way more perks. You get um, exclusive only Patreon videos that I do that don't get to YouTube and um, things like that. So I do an end of stream draw for all members, YouTube members, and Patreons that come into the stream. Okay, you just have to be here. You don't have to be here at the end to uh, to collect the prize or anything like that. I will get in touch with you. Oh, and that pen, no, there it goes. Digger Mike's just dropped another super chat there. It's a perfect time to explain those as well. So anybody who does a super chat during this live stream also goes in the draw at the end of the stream. So there's two draws. There's super chat draw and members and patrons. And at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, you're collecting tokens. Uh, and at the moment, Jade's Adventure's got two tokens and Digger Mike have two tokens. Once, once somebody reaches five tokens, they win a custom knife made by me. So yeah, so that's the, that's the goal at the moment. That's, that's the big prize. So that's where we're heading. And uh, Jade doesn't want to miss out. <laughs> He's right in there between Jade and Digger Mike. It's a uh, it's a head to head battle at the moment. So yeah, so that that's the deal with what I'm doing, writing names down. Just if you were a little bit con sort of wondering what the heck I was doing, um, I generally do have giveaways during the stream, but I'm going to make this a fairly short stream tonight. Um, I hadn't really we've been out all afternoon at a barbecue, and I didn't really have anything planned. I might do something off the cuff later, but we'll see how the stream goes. See how many people we get in, eh? Um, so what do we got here? Hit that like button. Cheers, matey. Thank you so much. Can't wait to get my... Oh, yes, yes. Been waiting to get one for ages. Good things come to people. They do dig a mic. So dig a mic has just got himself a... Um, well, secondhand Knox 800 with a bit of kit with it. Um, so... He's going to be picking that up tomorrow, and he's going to be selling his Vanquish. So, Mike, if you want to put up how much you want to sell it for in here, um, and what it is, go for it, mate. I'm I'm not too worried about that. So, if you want to, if you've got a price in mind and you've got an idea, flick that in there, and um, yeah, might even be able to sell it on here. You never know, Mad Kiwi, blooming heck, mate. Good job, thank you so much. I'll put, I'll give you a couple of entries there, mate. Mad Kiwi. Drops a $10 banger, whoo! Thank you so much. It's definitely worth a couple. Look at that. A bit speechless and not even writing your name properly, mate. <laughs> Thanks heaps, buddy. Oh, Jade. <laughs> Oh my goodness, guys, guys, thank you. I have to decide what kit I'm going to put with it. Oh, okay, sweet as, yeah, because you got, you've got a few bits and pieces, haven't you? I'm going to have to give you a couple for that, Jade. It's way too generous. Thank you so much. Crikey. These guys are spoiling me. Keep me busy anyway. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've hit the like button, mate. Good on you, EDC. Yep, make sure you are. Uh, it's like a bidding war here. Well, the thing is, mate, um, Danelle, I've got a couple of knives here. I'll show you one of them actually in a minute. One of them's actually Mad Kiwis. And um, yeah, they're a custom one-off knife. Real, real nice. Um, one-off, completely unique. 
and um, the value of the knife is going to be about $300. So it's a pretty cool prize to, to be gunning for. Um, and you get to pick, you get to pick a style out of eight different, or a style out of about six different styles. And I've got about, flip, what do I have? I've got about 20 different types of handle timbers. So you get to pretty much choose and put your knife together and then I'll build it for you. So that's the, um, that's the end of stream giveaway at the moment, running at the moment. So, um, yeah, something a little bit different. I don't know how it'll go, whether it'll work, or I'm hoping it won't take too long. I'm also hoping it won't go really quickly. <laughs> like at the moment, Jade's, uh, Jade and Mike are sort of head to head, but hope, hopefully we'll get some more people in there tonight and get some other, some other people. Um, yes, Mad Kiwis. Mad Kiwi just about pretty much stole the car today. He sent me some pics and says, guess what I got? Look what I've got. I only paid, told me how much he'd paid for it. I just about fell off me. Goes, runs, there's no rust, and it's a beautiful little thing. 54 Wolseley, uh, 4x44 Auto, whatever that means. I have no idea, but it's a 1954 Wolseley. Um, cool little car by the looks of it. Um, is it two-door or four-door, uh, Craig? Um, yeah. Josh Fenson, beautiful knives, crispy. Can't wait to blood mine in. Pure craftsman. Cheers, Josh. So uh, Joshua and his two brothers, they just bought one each. We did a big uh, unveiling on, when was it? Thursday night, wasn't it? Big unveiling on Thursday night. I finally got them to them. I've been, and it's something I'm going to um, showcase tonight, but I've been, I've been looking at ways to package them. I wanted to do it as professionally as I could without being really commercial and still have that um, handmade look. And I've been looking at boxes and looking at cartons and display cases and stuff like that. And there's plenty out there. Um, <laughs> no, they're not so pure silver EDC. Definitely not. Uh, that would cost a fortune. No, they're um, high carbon steel. And I'll show you one soon. Um, Auckland Knife Show this year. Oh, possibly not this year, mate. I'm going to try and launch everything officially by spring. Um, I want to get my shoulder um, surgery out of the way first, get that done, get back on the road road to recovery. I want to have at least two of all my knife styles made and finished, boxed up, ready to put on the website so that when I launch the website, I'll have about 16 to 20 knives on there straight away. Um, just so when I launch, there will be inventory in there and it's not and like taking orders if somebody comes in sees a knife they want they can buy that straight away or they can go the custom route and and have one made cheers digger mike these guys are legends um but because i've got my surgery i want to get that out of the way first so i'm going to make some over winter um and i'll try and get a website made over winter as well so that this spring i did i know i said last summer this spring we will officially launch the um crispy's kiwi blades there'll also be crispy kiwi bullion i'm going to get back into the bullion side of things and then there'll be crispy's kiwi adventures as the mother um i guess the mother channel that incorporates it all so there were three different or two different entities off crispy crispy's kiwi adventures getting stickers made up for each one um hopefully there'll be merchandise as well on the on the site and um, that will just be linked through my channel and hopefully that will help me grow um, a little bit and start building this channel up. Uh, that's my big goal for the next few years, guys, is to really build this channel up and start getting in some epic videos and epic trips. And yeah, like I've been saying for a long time, member trips and things like that, catching up with people like I've done with, with Mad Kiwi, Clay Tool Stories, West Coast Feral, uh, Kiwi and Oz, all sorts, trying to catch up with people and do things with them, post videos, and have real cool times. Uh, like the sluices, going over, taking people over to the coast, doing um thing. But to do that, I'm going to need more time outside of work. And the only way I'm going to do that is by growing this channel so that it will support me, uh, which is a big, big epic mean feat in itself, and it's probably going to take a few years. Um, but I'm in it for the long haul. I, I really enjoy what I do. I love chatting with you guys as well. It's actually... It's funny how I've actually, I've, I've really missed this whole live stream thing. I, I, yeah, 
when you're in a dark place and you don't want to talk to people, I think actually, to be honest, it's probably it probably would have been one of the best things for me. Um, jumping on here and actually having a chat to other people and and forget and trying to forget about my issues and worries and and woes and all the rest of it and just chatting, being normal, being normal. Ricky Thompson, g'day brother. What are your patron tiers? So I have a five, ten, and twenty dollar tier. Uh, I think that's US. So I think it works out. What does it work out, guys? You guys know who? Um, I think it's about nine twenty for the nine twenty New Zealand um, for the for the um, the lowest tier. It's five. It's five dollars US. I know that much. So you work that out on the exchange rate, and that's what it works out. But Ricky, that gets you that gets you um, first on all my videos. All my videos that I post on YouTube go to Patreon first for a couple of days, so you actually get to see all my videos before anyone else. There are also some videos on Patreon that don't get to YouTube. I do a lot of gardening videos, gardening updates. I'm going to be doing some knife making videos that will only go on Patreon. And probably 50% of my uh, metal detecting videos are going to start going onto Patreon as well. I'm also going to start doing some just some personal vlogs of day-to-day -day stuff and um, everyday living. Basing, basing it on what Clay Tool Story does, if you if you know Clay Tool Stories. Um, just sort of little snap vlogs and little bits and pieces. I've got to get into it a little bit more. Um, I've got to push myself into pulling out the phone and recording things rather than thinking, oh, that was awesome. I should have recorded that. <laughs> I'm a great person for thinking back in hindsight, thinking, oh, I should have that, should have done that, should have done this. But yeah, so I've got to try and get into my head and bring that camera out um, when something something cool looks like it's about to happen or if I've got something prophetic to say or something like that. Um, oh, cheers, Mad Kiwi and Mike. Thank you. Hey, Poor Dad Adventures. Hi, back from the lake. Well, you're back from the lake or we're back from the lake? We're definitely back from the lake. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, oh, you're on, oh, you, Ricky Thompson? I, the name, I thought I recognized the name. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah, yep. Yeah, I really enjoy his content and he's probably, he's a big mentor. Clay is a massive mentor for me and my channel. Um, also, personally, he really helps me out and really looks after me. Um, he helped me lose an, an insane amount of weight last year and has helped me keep it off. Um, he also helps me with my depression as well. So the guy is an absolute legend. Um, if you don't know Clay Tall Stories, you need to head over to his channel and have a chat to him. He's just a legend, absolute legend. He's a wise old fella as well and he's just got a heart of gold, absolute heart of gold. <laughs> nice one, brother. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, oh, cheers, Jade. You're a legend. The Sluices is in the house. Better write your name down as well. How's it going, everyone? Crispy's page. Ah, yeah. Get way more than. Oh, cheers, bro. Hey, so how's it going over there, uh, the Sluices? You getting getting lots of gold? My friend gave me two because my friend's watching his stream. Oh, what's your friend's name? Johnny. Johnny? Yeah. Johnny. Lynn. Uh, from school. Has he got a name or is he is he on here or? He's in I haven't seen any Johnnies yet. He must be, oh, Johnny Hell, is it? Maybe. Johnny Hell. Johnny Hell, are you, uh, are you Hunter's mate? You're the one, you are daring him to do things. See, Johnny Hell. <laughs> How's it, mate? Now you got everybody around. We got heaps, seven guys up the river. Dad bought all his mates. Oh, mean. Hey, Sarge NZ. How's it, brother? Just had four days up the lake. Good swimming. No, it's not him. Yeah, I know it's not him. It's Robot123. Oh, Robot123. Oh, well, Robot123 is lurking. <laughs> oh, here he goes. Gritty. Gritty, gritty, gritty. gritty. <laughs> so we've got a lurker there. And Johnny Hell. Sorry about that if I thought you were someone else. Um, so I just had four days up at the lake, good swimming. Cool, what lake were you at, poor dad? Um, we were down at Lake Benmore for 
what did we end up, four days, that was pretty cool. Um, but then we had the cons in a bucket, about to walk out, one of the guys picked it up, paused it, stripped it. <gasps> you're kidding me! Dylan, you're kidding me! Did somebody actually pour all your concentrates back into the river? You'd be in there sucking it all out, wouldn't you? You'd have to be. Dig it all out again? What did you do? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's no good, Sarge. I hope you're doing a bit better now, mate. Cheers, Johnny Hill. I'll put you in the, uh, in the super chat there. Hey, I hope you're doing a bit better, Sarge. I know being in a dark place and having a having a breakdown like that's not a good thing. Um, it's always, always tough, always tough. Um, Cirxy, g'day mate, welcome along. There's a name I haven't seen in the uh, chat before. Welcome along, buddy. Spooked a stag of a lifetime today. Oh, that would have been in velvet, though, wouldn't it? Or are they starting to are they starting to strip now? Um, I'm going to try and get out for a. Um, I'm going to try and. Oh, Cintanard. Rotoriti, Rotoriti or Lake Rotoroa? What one, bro? Um, oh, big stag of a lifetime. What? How many points was it, bro? How many points? Cheers, the sluices. Put you in the old super chat there. Uh -huh, yeah, by accident, he had no idea. He felt gutted. He had no idea we had we got maybe two thirds back. We reckon luckily we found even better spot. Oh, nice, mean. You're gonna still still trying to gonna hook up tomorrow tomorrow evening. Um, I'm thinking of probably just maybe heading away straight away after my MRI. So I may be there like mid afternoon. We'll just see how it all rolls. See what happens. Um, oh, big old flounder. I love flounder. We haven't got many spots around here to go, um, to go um, like spearing, but we've got plenty of places to get a net. Once my shoulder comes right, I'm going to get myself a um, fishing kayak and get myself a flounder's net. And we've got um, we've got all Lake Ellesmere, and we've got um, uh, top end of Littleton Harbour there up around Governor's Bay. It's meant to be some pretty good netting up there for flounder. Uh, I'll flick you a text. We'll try and be out of the river same time as. You Okay, no, nah, sweetest. Even if we meet up halfway through or meet up in Moana um, or something like that, bro, just um, keep in touch and we'll sort it out. Uh, David Carlisle says, my smartphone is a stupid phone. Yeah, mate, sometimes you just want to throw them out the window, don't you? Okay, at least it was not a all lost. Yeah, flip, Dylan, you'd just be wanting to cry. I know I would. I've been jumping up and down. <laughs> I'd probably beat the guy to death. <laughs> oh, he must have felt so bad, though. Obviously, um, some of the guys you got over there aren't aren't gold guys. Uh, Sexy says looked to be fourteen, but he had a lot of height and was white. Oh, so what? Maybe a big old stag? Maybe mint? Was it in um? Was it in full velvet? Or were they starting to strip? Uh, Sexy, is that right? Sexy, am I saying that right, buddy? I hope I am. Thank you so much, Ricky. That's much appreciated. I will put you in the uh, end of stream draw. Remember, guys, you don't need to be here because um, your name will just go down in the diary. And yeah, we'll just work, Ricky Thompson. Much appreciated, matey. Thank you. Got you in the draw there. My phone rebooted and it was at. Oh no, got in. Found a buried. Welcome, buddy. Welcome along. Carrie Z, hello from Found a Buried. Oh, we're getting a we're getting a Found a Buried raid, are we? Ha <laughs> ha Cheers, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're saying it right. In velvet, but I think they should be hard. Yeah, I was I was thinking I've seen a lot of guys, um, a lot of guys sort of passing up on them at the moment, but I thought they would have been. Would have been full velvet, possibly getting hard underneath. Um, and I reckon they'll be, yeah, I reckon they'll be starting to, the big boys will be starting to strip real soon. Sergeant Z in that end of stream draw. Cheers, brother. 
BH Ringer, Carrie Z, how from found it buried? Found it buried, sent me over to say hi. Oh, make sure you guys smash that uh, like button when you come in. That'd be awesome. Yeah, David, when they get paid, when they get old, they, yeah, they do, I, they, I reckon they make them purposely so they slow down and start stuffing up and doing silly thing. Dead Possum is in the house. Welcome, buddy. Cheers, mate. Oh, chat's rocking. What do we got? We've got 28 in the house. Excellent. Uh, my phone died. Not sure if you saw I'm here. Don't want to miss out on the draw. Yep, you are here, mate. Oh, did you come in a bit earlier? I did miss you. Thanks, matey. Uh, found a buried and Mike P. Panusi raid. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Brax is on here. G'day, Brax. 710 is oil upside down. Woo! Getting a raid going on here, guys. Mike P. Penance, uh, is it Panaki? Woohoo! Let's freaking go. Make sure you smash that like button, guys, when you come in. Do my uh, do my analytics. Wonderful. SOB, I got a raid going on from all kinds of people. Spud Lee, welcome. Happy New Year. Same to you. Paul Casper, I hope I'm not missing anybody. Uh, I'm in both, both places. But David Carlisle, you're not here. You're not anywhere, aren't you? <laughs> and Jade hit me with another super chat. Cha-cha, brother. We're going to have a good, good, uh, good old barrel full of names tonight. Doug Harding. Welcome, buddy. George Raid. Who's a stacker? How's it, my brother? Found it buried, sent me. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I will make sure I go through after this, uh, after the stream, and I'll sub every one of you that have come over and uh, hook up on your channel. I think most of you, by the looks of the names, I remember them. I think I may also already be a, um, a sub, but I know YouTube has been doing some weird and wonderful things just recently. And um, yeah, I'll make sure I'll go back in there and I'll catch you all up. So I must have you, Spud Lee, because you were blue. <laughs> so. so everybody's catching up. Jacob, I recently found a detecting location and found some NZ silver half crowns. Nice. And there lots of clad as it had not been detected before. I started detecting. But it's not a very old location. Interesting. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe the... Um, I don't know, maybe the dirt's been brought there from somewhere else, mate, if it's not a, 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 new, a an old place. Um, although if you're only finding NZ stuff, it only has to be from the 1950s, and you'll still be finding old, old NZ stuff in there. Cheers, Crazy Jim, and welcome along. Silver Wishes. Cheers, guys. Thanks for all popping in. You had to resub me, Silver, silver Wishes? Oh, thanks heaps. Um, it's actually quite good that I got a bunch of guys on here at the moment from from other channels because something else I wanted to talk about tonight is a big giveaway I'm going to do, um, and I might as well talk about it now while everybody's coming in and 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 raiding me. Woo! <laughs> Little penny coins, welcome along. Make sure you guys smash that like button on your way through. It'd be much appreciated. Um, I'm going for a swing next week and looking forward to it. Oh, looking for the time capsule. Yeah, I got asked to look for one at a school, but um, never found it. But they did say that they buried it quite deep and it wasn't a massive capsule. So they might be out of luck. They gave me the area that they'd done it into. And um, g'day, Braxton. <laughs> oh, no, he's not over there. Um, yeah, and we, we just couldn't find it. But they did say that they buried it four or five foot deep. So And the grounds of the school have been redone as well. So... Be a bit of a, I don't think they're going to find that at all unless they uh, get a deep, deep ground searching radar. Um, so, Chris, I found my second gold salvia a few days. Oh, well done, buddy. Man, I've got to go back and see why I'm not sub to you still. Good old YouTube. Ricky Thompson, what's the oldest, coolest thing you've found? Oh, man. The oldest coin I've found is a 1787 halfpenny. Uh, British halfpenny, 
The coolest thing I've probably ever found, well, I've got probably two, two things that were pretty cool. Um, and that's, I've found a sovereign and a big quartz nugget that's got about four and a half grams of gold in it, your visible gold. I found those in the same hole in an inner city park where there's no gold anywhere. So that was pretty cool, full sovereign and a gold nugget. But I think the coolest thing I ever found is an old World War II medal from 1940. Uh, it's a German um, Africa Corps medal for the German Italian, um, oh, what do you call it? I can't remember what you call it, but when the Germans and the Italians were fighting together over in, uh, in the Africa War under Rommel, the Italians made a medal just for the Germans and basically issued it in 1940. 1941, they changed the medal to a, a different type of medal. I've got a, a version one out of brass. But when the Italians surrendered to the Allies, Germany didn't want anything to do with them, so they recalled all the medals. Everybody that got one of these medals, they had to be recalled. They were melted back down and put back into munitions. So to find one of these medals down in Dunedin, of all places in New Zealand, is a pretty epic find, and I reckon it was probably a war, a war, um, like somebody, a war, what do you call it? I can't remember what. And my hit, mine's just going tonight. <laughs> yeah, too many bourbons, I think. Um, basically, a war prize. Um, and basically, I think a, a soldier has found this this medal on somebody and um, grabbed it, maybe with a few other items, brought it home, and then promptly lost it back here in New Zealand. That was a pretty epic. Um, that's a pretty epic find. That probably stands as one of my coolest finds I've ever found. Um, so I'll just catch up here on the chat. You guys are really chatty tonight. It's cool. Um, the location was mid 1800s. Oh, okay. Oh, Milo. Yeah, Mad Kiwi's got another location for me, so I'm going to have to go down there. Um, Mr. MJ Bordero, have fun. Will do, mate. Thank you. Silver wishes. Had the rest. Of, yep, got that. Uh, First time I detected it, my pocket was full of cleared coins and some silver. Yeah, so it must be a, a probably a later area. Um, it was from the 60s. Oh, okay. That might have some cool stuff in it, Sarge. Came across some gold from my granddad's estate. I'd say there's at least a third to a half a teaspoon. Um, you'd have to weigh it, buddy. Um... A third, a third to a half a teaspoon. Ooh, that's that's actually quite a bit. You've probably got maybe you've maybe maybe got a couple of grams, maybe three grams, um, and that's probably NZ two or three hundred bucks worth of gold. So yeah, definitely get some scales, mate, and weigh it. That'd be your best thing. It goes for about people are selling it for about a hundred bucks a hundred bucks a gram at the moment. Between a hundred and a hundred and ten. Uh, if it's nice nuggety gold, you might get a little bit more because nuggets tend to uh, tend to get a little bit more. Uh, Dalton Craig, how you doing, mate? Robot one two three, like and sub. Ch cheers, mate. Twenty four watching, twenty six likes. Excellent, BH Ringer. Thank you so much. Yeah, the old desert rats. Yeah. Yeah, they were all under Rommel. So it was when Rommel was um, sort of basically almost um, dominating that African war. Uh, they were running around, running around then. What's the blue, blue spanner? Port Ad Adventures, they are my mods. So if you are blue, you get to time out people, um, make sure that the comments are good to go and that sort of thing so anybody that's blue is, is basically they're working for me tonight checking all my comments making sure the comments are cool and if anybody starts playing up and being silly you'll be out the door they'll send you out it's just so i don't have to constantly um look after the comments and stuff like that uh do you have any air guns i do dalton craig i have a dinky little antique pistol just a, it's a, a really old brake barrel pistol, single shot. Um, barely, in fact, 
I did a YouTube short with the young fellas shooting a uh, Coke bottle and it just bounced off the Coke bottle. It was that pathetic. You could probably shoot each other with it and it would just feel like you're getting whacked with a tea towel maybe. <laughs> so it's pretty old and it's pretty pretty harmless, but it's quite fun and it's fairly accurate and the guy, the kids love it. The boys love it. They think it's great. Um, gold, yeah, gold, yes. Gold did break 3,000 today here in New Zealand. Um, gold going up and up. It sure is, Jake J. Oh, there's another name. Welcome along, guys. Welcome along. Air rifles are great, and they get, yeah, right up to 50 cal, mate, right up to, yeah, some of the big ones, the big gas ones, man. Um, they do some damage over there. Um, so, yeah, so back to what I was talking about, and I'm going to do, I'm getting real close to 4,000 subs, and I've always done a giveaway at 1,000, at the 1,000 marks. So I did the last giveaway I did at 3,000, and I'm only a few hundred subs away from 4,000. So I'm going to be dropping a video in the next few days, um, probably once I get back from the coast, and it will be all about what we're going to do, um, yeah, how much time there is, and basically a knife is going to be up for grabs. And I'm going to make another little knife like this. So this is my feathers and scales knife. So this is my one that I made for myself. Beautiful little thing. So I'm going to make another one of these. This one's getting well worn and dirty now. It's been in the salt water and all the rest of it. But I'm going to make another knife like this, and that is going to be the grand prize. And then I'm also going to put the feelers out and see if I can get any other sponsorship prizes as well. Um, see who else is out there willing to, to sponsor the, pro, um, the thing. So I've got that. So there'll be a knife up for grabs. And second prize will be a one ounce pure silver heart. So a one ounce, is it? Yeah, one ounce, nine nine fine. Silver heart. So just as a bit of a second prize runner up. So they'll be the two prizes. And then hopefully, if with any luck, we'll get some other bits and pieces as well. So, ooh, says Dalton Craig, I know. So definitely worth um, subbing guys. Paul Casper, welcome along. Um, hang on, what have I missed here? Crikey, you guys are real chatty tonight. It's great. Loving it. What rifle were you using to shoot the possums in the traps when you're trapping vids? Uh, dead possum. I was using a Ruger 1022 with a silencer on it. So nice and simple, nice and easy, and quiet. So, um, yeah, sometimes I just, it's just easier and quicker when you've got a big trap line to just shoot them in the head let them bleed out and relax rather than smack them over the head and then try and get them to relax. They relax a lot quicker when you shoot them and um, so you can pluck them a lot quicker whereas you smack them on the head, they tense up for a, quite a while afterwards, I've found, before they relax. I mean, you'd, you'd know what all about that, but basically you smack them on the head, they do die, but they tense up. And while they're tensed up, it's quite hard to pluck them, so you've got to let them go and hang for a little bit. I just hang them off the back of the truck sometimes. Whereas when you shoot them, they're dead instantly, and the body relaxes pretty much almost instantaneously to within about 10 seconds. And you can just pretty much pluck them straight away. Just it's just makes life easier when you got a when you got a line of about 30 to 50 traps that you want to do in a big area where you get a lot of possums as well. So yeah, I'm just lazy. <laughs> it makes for better viewing too. You don't yeah, yeah, a lot of guys don't, yeah, you get all those uh Karens that don't seem to like you bopping them on the head and putting them to sleep with a hammer. So, yeah, a little bit more humane, a little bit quicker, and it's just a bit more time efficient. So, I won't be doing it so much at the moment because I cannot get ammo for my ten, uh, 1022. I run CCI subs, Subsonics, and of course, nobody in New Zealand has CCI Subsonics. I'm down to my last 200 at the moment, so I'll be, uh, yeah, treating those with respect. <laughs> I won't be getting out there going anymore it'll be single shots only and yeah making my shots count um oh jade you're a legend you sponsored my last giveaway too mate you're awesome um i'm gonna have a chat to uh dredge and Z. hopefully they'll jump on board as well um 
we might be able to get some pretty cool prizes together. But basically the deal will be that um, obviously if we can reach the 4,000 before my surgery, we'll do the big live draw before that. If not, it'll be a wee bit after that once everything settles down and I can um, move again and be mobile. Uh, Ricky Thompson, when you're plucking possums to sell the fur, is it okay to pluck the whole possum? Um, I pluck the entire possum, Ricky, um, except for the last two thirds of the tail. I leave the last two thirds of the tail. It's a real coarse fibers and they don't generally like it. If you machine pluck, however, you can pretty much take everything off the entire possum because it fluffs it up and agitates the fur and it pretty much all goes exactly the same. So your belly fur will look exactly the same as your back fur, your leg fur and your tail fur. So, um, yeah. Get the knocker out, says Bud Lee. Yeah, exactly. Today I made a crossbow and it shot 50 metres, but after... Oh, gutting, Dalton! Oh, that would have been fun. I've made I've made the old bows before. Um, do a colour collage of some of your Tiki Tour vids, mate. What ones are those, man, Kiwi? Or are you talking to someone else? Um... Do you have any issues with the subs not coming out after shooting? Um, I've never, I've run a few different uh, types of ammo through my gun. Um, I've got a little, I've got a little Ruger 1022 with the stainless barrel and Hogue stock. Um, I've had issues with, oh, I've got to remember what one it was, a Winchester brand. I think it was a green and white box green and yellow box just a winchester one but i've never had an issue with my cci uh only after three or four months of not cleaning my gun i get the odd one that doesn't feed and jams up but that's my own fault because i haven't cleaned the gun um once you clean it out and give it a good good ramrod and a good clean she cycles beautifully um and CCIs, uh, they seem to be the most accurate. I, I can do, I can do ten shots standing, into a 50, 50 cent piece with my um, with my CCIs, at about 25, 30 meters. It's it's very accurate with those. That's why I like them. Um, just just yeah, good ammo. You'd pay a little bit more for it, but um, it's worth it. Uh, can I buy your air pistol? Oh, God, that, that's been passed on to me by another mate. So sadly, no, mate. I, I won't be getting rid of that. Um, just can't get... No, you can't get can't get much ammo at the moment at all. Just about everything's... Thankfully, I've got my 300 wind mags loaded and I bought a whole heap of 308 way back when things were looking a bit, bit suspect. So I should be okay for a wee while. Um... No ammo for 1022s, air pistol for space. Yeah, it's probably not a good or not a not a bad idea and the fact that I'll probably have to bop them on the head with the air pistol I have because <laughs> it won't penetrate them. Um, unless I put it up its nose or in its eye or in its ear or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a good old vintage one. It's it's um yeah, honestly, mate, I could probably shoot it from here, hit my hand, and it would still bounce off. Might leave a wee bruise and a welt, but that'd be about it. Um, it's pretty pathetic. It's pretty old. I mean, if I redid the spring in it. I might be able to get it to back up to three or four hundred feet per second, but I'd say it's barely doing hundreds, two hundred feet per second at the moment. But it's an old vintage one. It's pretty cool. Um, Forty grain subs have pushed out to eighty meters. Yeah, I, I mean, Ricky Thompson, mate. I can, um, I've got my sp scope set up. I can, I can shoot bunnies out to 100, 120 meters with my twenty-two. Um, just running the subs, just even subs, not even um, hyper velocity or anything like that. Uh, I've just got I've got increments on my um, on my reticle that I know I've I've been on the range, walk back, shot, shot, and and I know which little notch does eighty meters, which notch does hundred meters, and I've I've got the drop pretty good. So as long as you guess the uh, distance of the rabbit right, you can generally um, you can generally lob the twenty two out to 100, 120 meters piece of cake. What's up? Oh yeah, cool bananas. Love ya. Oh, the boss is going out for a bit. 
So yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, the twenty two is an underrated little caliber. I mean, we've shot we've shot fellow deer with the twenty two. Um, in fact, I had a mate um, a mate a wee while ago who was shooting a fellow with a seventeen HMR, and the damn thing just wouldn't fall over. And we were literally only twenty meters away, and this thing just wouldn't fall over, wouldn't fall over. And I just picked up the twenty two, shot it in the head, poof, dropped like a sack of spuds. And when we uh, when we opened it up. His little um his little bullets were just expanding on the just inside the rib cage and they weren't even penetrating through the rib cage they were expanding doing a lot of damage on the outside and messing up the meat and breaking bones and all the rest but they weren't going through and penetrating and this poor old deer was just um peppered with all these holes and it took the 22 sort of in behind the ear to, to put it down um at 1200 feet per second like our rifle kill a possum oh you weren't really mate yeah I used to have a thousand foot, uh, thousand FPS uh, air rifle, and I used to go shooting rabbits and possums all all the time in the in the forest at the back of where we used to live as a kid. And honestly, yeah, I could I could shoot I could shoot rabbits out to 50, 50 60 meters with that. It was just a one seven seven caliber. It was awesome. Loved it. Hey you. Hello. Hello. Uh, possums are protected here in Oz. I know they're exactly the same as they are here, but um. Yeah, they're a pest here. Don't know why you guys protect them over there. But I'd love a possum skin cloak and a bedspread. I know a guy who just made a, a bedspread, and it just looks awesome. He did the um, he alternated the greys and the and the reds. So the reds are a slightly blacker, gingery, dark, dark colours, and then the um, the greys are a real cool mottled grey. And he alternated it, and it looks like a big patchwork patchwork quilt, and it just looks spectacular. Um, I bet it'll be warm too. Uh, PM saw poor, poor brass, not in good. Oh, okay, yeah, I've never used the PMC. I think I've used Federal and Winchester, and that's all I've used. And even though both of those were crap, um, I like the 22 Magnums. Drop the rear. Yeah, yeah, I've got a mate who um, shoots a 22 Magnum. Yeah. I got one. They're good. Mad Kiwi, is that Josh? Who's Josh? Crispy stack any ammo you can, you can get trade. Yeah, that's that's probably a good idea, Spud. Um, the only thing is, at the moment, we can't get any ammo. <laughs> I'm on a um, I'm on a Facebook page, and every time something comes in, it's like they they give us a bit of a notification, and I'm always looking for for certain projectiles from a 300. Um, I've got. I've got a few from a three three oh eight, um, but I would I wouldn't mind a few more from a my three hundred. They're pretty rare. For some reason, brass and brass and ammo for three hundreds and, and your magnums and all the rest of it's quite hard to get. Um, same with primers and powder. Powder for three hundred wind mags is like rock and horse poop. It's just so rare you just can't get it. Thankfully, I've got a I've got a big one kilo tub, so I should have enough to keep keep me going for a wee while anyway. Um, what you need, Chris, is a big boy Bruder. 50 cal. Oh, you mean the big Barrett? Yeah, the big Barrett semi. <laughs> I actually watched a um I watched a wee doco on on the guy who, who made that. It was it was really cool. Really cool. Oh, at the moment, Ricky, I'm not doing a hand load. I'm just running um the Hornady. Is it the Hornady Whitetail series? 308s? Um I'm running that to get the brass, and then I'm going to be running uh, one. I'm going to be running one six. Well, oh, I can't remember what they are. Are they one six sevens? I think or one six five, one six fours. Uh, Acubons. So I'm going to be running Acubons through them. So I'll keep all the brass, keep all the Hornady brass because Hornady is pretty good brass. Shoot, shoot the boxes of what I've got. Once I've got all the brass, I've got another 100 um, Acubon projectiles and might be 165, 164 Acubons. I can't remember now. I've got two, two boxes of 50 there sitting there. And then we're running the, um, we're running Hornady. Oh, man. Yeah, we're running the Hornady. Is it? Oh, I can't remember what it is now. Running the Hornady. High performance ones in the um, in the three hundred, and they seem to be doing really well. Um, 
Craig Dalton, tomorrow I'm going to my auntie's house to shoot her mania birds. We get 15 bucks a bird. Nice. I've actually heard there's quite a few guys doing pest control up there on the old manias. Wicked. Um, that will fix a possum. Flip, yeah. Well, I've shot possums with my 300, and I, I kid you not, they just they just evaporate, man. They, there's nothing left. It's just instant goulash and splattered all over the tree or the ground. <laughs> it's uh, pretty ugly, pretty ugly. Yeah, well, these ones that I've, these ones I'm running, um, Xerxes, are actually the, the um, lead-tipped. They're not the polymer-tipped. So they're the cheaper rounds, which is quite cool. I actually bulk bought. But they run really nice in the, in the gun I've got. I've got a Ruger M77 skeleton stock stainless. And they group really nice in that. So I was quite happy, and it means I can use the brass later on. Um, so. Right. Now let's. Uh, this is the moment you've been waiting for, Mad Kiwi. So, what I've been doing is with my knives, I've been trying to find out. Ah, oh, NZ Warriorsman, you're never too late, mate. Never too late. Thanks for joining in. NZ Warriors Men. Thanks for popping by, matey. So I've been trying to do sort out some packaging for my knives. I mean, most of you have all seen my knives somewhere or another, either on Facebook or the last couple of um last couple of live streams and things. And I've been looking at boxes, cartons, display cases, and all the rest of it. And I've found heaps, but they're all a generic size. And None of them, or some of them would fit some of my knives, and then others would be just way too small, too big, too long, not wide enough, and all the rest of it. So I did the old YouTube thing, and I looked up how to make a box. And it looked easy. <laughs> so I now make my own boxes. So I pretty much, I've bought some black card, and I now make my own boxes. And... My wife, my lovely wife, helped me design up a logo. So we've got the logo now of CK Blades. So this is my permanent logo now that will come on all my knives. And then next to it is Style. And this one's a custom. Steel, 1084 high carbon. Handle, Lignum Vitae and Brass. And then, of course, it's got my standard YouTube logo on there. And then inside, I've got... Another wee bit of writing on there. And that's just a disclaimer saying that, hey, every knife is custom made, one off, won't be perfect, blah, 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 and a bit of knife care. But I'm also now signing every single one I send out. And then inside it is the knife. Mad Kiwi, do you recognize this one? Well, you probably won't at the moment because you haven't seen it with its sheath on. This is Mad Kiwi's knife. So we've had some major, major issues with the handle on this one. Many moons ago, he gave me a vintage lawns bowl, a lignum vitae lawns bowl. And it was beautiful, beautiful timber, extremely heavy, but it's very oily. And I don't think it had dried out. Even in the blooming hundred years it's been sitting around, I don't think it had dried out because it was such a big form. And when I spliced it up to make handle scales out of it, it shrunk back and it's cracked, like it's got some cracks through it and all the rest of it. So what I've done is I've filled them with a bit of uh, resin and glue and we've sanded it back and it's finally looking tickety-boo. So I've made up a sheath for you, mate. I don't know if you'll ever use it. It's, it's a fairly nice knife. It might be more of a day display knife. But there you go, mate. Looks beautiful, absolutely stunning. So this was one of my first knives that I actually ever made. Um, but this is going going back quite a wee ways. I, all my handles are hand formed, hand sanded. It's got the lignum vitae, it's got an orange G10 liner, and a beautiful brass bolster. And I actually, I poured, melted down and poured this brass myself, and I'll probably never ever do that again because it got a few little air bubbles in the casting and they go right through and I just can't sand those out. So mate, you've got a real custom 
custom knife there. It's a one-off. <laughs> it's not perfect, but hey, it's um, yeah, it was a good learning curve for me. But it's still beautiful, and it's still blinking sharp. So whether you use it or not, it's up to you, mate. Probably a pretty cool utility knife, but I'll get that sent on its way fairly soon. And again, these Kydex sheaths, bloody brilliant sheaths, and I make the old clips myself as well. So we're pretty much now underway. We are now fully streamlined with, with everything. We've got everything sorted. We've got the boxes now. Um, we've got the packaging, the boxes, the logo's all sweet. Everything is absolutely tickety-boo. Um, so now I've just got to get a few more made up. I mean, here's another one here. This is a TAC125 that you saw last, last week. And that one's going off up north uh, next week. Um, so we are we are under underway now. We are cranking, which is really exciting. Getting all that finer detail and stuff um, sorted out has just been it's been a weight off my shoulders because I haven't been knowing what to do um, and how to do it all. Now every knife gets a custom box that's made specifically for the size of that knife. So the width, the length, they're always the same depth. But the width and the, and the length are all custom to the knife. So the knife's not going to rattle around in there too much. And now it's packed with a bit of packing stuff. So yeah, very exciting. Very cool. And obviously the winner of my 4,000 subs will get a smaller one like this one. In a box. All the rest of it. All the, all the bizzo. I am getting some stickers made up. But they, yeah, they'll be a wee ways away. My dad's designing that up for me. And dad's on retirement go slow time so <laughs> i'm not expecting that to be in, in any sort of hurry um but yeah it's it's very exciting so and yeah so the winner will get one of those small ones obviously the end of stream guys will go in in the drawer to to have the, have one made up or, or basically that the winner of the the five tokens will get get to uh make one up i've got about i think i've got five or six orders at the moment and i'm making myself one which is um, pretty cool. So I've got to get all that done before my going to surgery. Um, so I'm going to be busy, real busy. So I'll catch up with the uh, chat. Just give me a couple of seconds, guys. Um, I rate the Seiko ammo I use. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Dig a mic. <laughs> Are you a league man, Mike? They look sweet. Cheers, Sarge. Very nice. Thank you. Haha, <laughs> Lignum Vito was a giveaway. I know. I know. I sort of I saw I thought I'd work, work it up and work it up, and then you'd be like, oh, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool, Spud. Um, I actually really enjoy making them. Okay, if you want to buy one, Dalton, uh Basically, send me an email, uh, crispieskiwiadventures at gmail.com, and then what I can do is we'll set you up, we'll get on um, into texting, and basically, question, could you make knives out of steel pipes? Um, you probably could, mate. That would require heating them up and forging them. I don't forge them. I do stock removal, so I get all my steel in a, in a big bar form with different thicknesses. I basically trace out my pattern, grind it all off, and then shape it all up, sand it down, put the handle on it, or treat, treat, heat treat it, put the handle on it, and you end up with a finished product. Um, I just don't have all the gear and the room to do forging. Uh, maybe down the track it would be pretty cool, but um, because I have a few steel pipes just sitting around there like Oh, crikey. Yeah, that's probably not the best steel either. Um, I use a high carbon 1084 steel. A um, lot more forgiving. Keeps a really good edge. And it heat treats really well to a good about 60 to 65 on the Rockwell. Uh, gets good hardness without having to go through real precise heating treatments. Um, you just heat it up to non-magnetic. Let it cool down. Heat it up to non-magnetic. Quench it in canola oil. Then you temper it in the oven for a couple of cycles at 200 degrees and that brings it right down and, and 
you end up with a mint as uh, mint as hardness. Uh, got a splurt, mate. Big luck. Cheers, Bud Lee. It was great to have you in, in mate. Thanks for coming. Um, how much? You, okay, Dalton. I've got three different sizes of knives, and they start at three. Uh, at, like this one here is two hundred and fifty bucks. That's the small. That's my small one. Then they work up. Um, they work up to. This is the next size. These are three hundred with the sheath. Um, so that's that's the sort of size blade. So they work up to about three hundred. This one here is that's a three hundred dollar knife, but because it's got a, bra a brass bolster, that goes up to a three hundred and fifty dollar knife. So that's a three fifty knife. And then my really big ones are my big my sticker and my brute, which are my two really big knives, are. 350 each and if you put brass on them brass bolsters they go up to 400 bucks that's with a sheath though so that gives you a bit of an idea they're not cheap but they're a custom one off and i kid you not there are guys out there making as good if not worse knives than that and charging upwards of a thousand dollars so i've tried to keep at the lower end of the market without pricing myself out of it and making no money whatsoever um, I've talked to a lot of guys, a lot of professionals who sell knives for five to eight hundred dollars, and they basically told me that I should be at that lower range. <laughs> There's no way I can charge people that much money for a knife. So I sort of met in the middle and I've gone I've gone with a, a figure that I'm happy with. Um, I still make a little bit out of it, not much, but I still make a little bit out of them. Uh, but it's the pleasure I get out of them at the moment. So, um, and they are a one-off. I am st I am only new. I've only been doing it maybe four or five months now of making knives. So I'm I'm fairly new at it. Maybe once I'm really good at it and my knives are coming out so good that it's phenomenal, I might start charging a million bucks a knife. But at this point, I'd rather get more blades out there. Um, people enjoying them. So yeah. So there you go, Dalton. I'm 11, don't have that sort of money. I, I figured as much, buddy. Um, they are they are a one-off knife. Everyone is completely identical. I could do a batch of the same knife with the same handles, handle material, and I can guarantee you every single one. If I did six knives, same style, same handles, like same handle timber, I guarantee you they will all be different. You'll have different grains in the timber, You'll have your blade will come out slightly different. Your handle will come slightly different because their handles are all hand done. Uh, so every single knife is absolutely identical. They are uh, not identical, one of a kind, sorry. They're absolutely one of a kind. Um, they will not be the same as anything else I make, um, which is cool. Means you get a piece that um, you know no one else will have anything like that. Um, so. Are uh, sawmill blades any good? Yep, they sure are, especially the big, the big, the big blades. Um, I've made a couple of smaller wee knives out of some small saw blades, um, but they're meant to be pretty cool. Uh, they they heat up and, and treat really well. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Sarge. I've got another chap who's saving up as well. He's on a bit of a benefit and he's saving like crazy. I'm going to do a bit of a deal for him. Um, but he's been saving like crazy, and he's he's taking a while. I, I don't know if he's going to get there. It's it's a tough one. He desperately, desperately wants wants a knife, um, and I'm going to make him a basic, basic, basic one. But I think it's still going to be out of his reach. Um, but yeah, what do you do? <laughs> um, my dad has old World War One gun knife. Oh, okay. I'll be interesting, interested to see what that is, Jacob. Uh, if, if it's a um, a bayonet or something like that, I'd be interested to have a look. Um, yeah, definitely they are, mate. Says the Mad Kiwi. Yeah, World War One bayonet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, if the price is right, mate, I'll, I I might be keen. Um, yeah, you gave Colin a whole bunch. He was yeah, he was stoked. They are good. They're good steel. Um, and all you need to do is make your knife, do all the rest of it, and then you've only just got to heat treat the. Um, the blade because the rest of it's the rest of it's already heat treated 
So they're already hard and steel, which is quite cool. But you just got to be careful when you make your knife that you don't heat the blade up and make it go purple. As soon as you do that, you'll make it go quite brittle. Um, then you've got to go through the whole entire heat process. Um, I'm thinking of trying my hand, but wanted. Oh, okay. It's, it, I mean, Sarge, a knife, a knife is a tool, and it's what, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look as fancy as that. I've got another mate who makes knives, and they are, they are probably the most rangy, hickory looking knives, but I'll tell you what, they are sharp, and they do the job. And that's what a knife's meant to do. I mean, I make knives that look good as well as being practical, but when push comes to shove, they're going to end up covered in blood or covered in dirt or yucky stuff. They're going to tarnish. These will tarnish in time. The 1084 steel will tarnish and go grey. It'll take on a really nice grey patina. They're not going to look shiny forever. And they're a tool. They're, they're used for cutting up things and getting dirty. So the thing is, is like, if you make a knife, it's you're pouring, you're putting your heart and soul into that knife. So it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it's functionable and does the job, and, and, and it's not going to break, obviously. Um, it, that's probably the biggest thing. And it, who cares about the look? It's, it's, it's what you put into it and all the rest of it. Um, and as long as it's sharp, as long as it does the job and does what it's made, made for. Um, time bag Darren. How's it, brother? Welcome along. Oh, he's coming over from the raid, bit late, but... Don't crack. Do you reckon you could make me... The world's cheapest knife that I could afford. Email me, buddy, and we'll sort something out, brother. We'll sort something out. Um, Mad Kiwi. Swedish steel there. <laughs> Scandia steel. Actually, I've got my my actual main hunting knife that I've got is actually a Swedish steel. Um, it's a wee seeker blade made in Sweden. And, oh, my goodness, it is like, the craziest, sharpest thing that I, I I can get that thing better than a razor. It is just phenomenally sharp. Takes a bit to get it sharp though. It does take a bit of working on the stones and you've really got to strop it. But um, no, it, it holds an edge really nice, really nice. Um, as long as it holds an edge and you can spend a lot of time sharpening. That's exactly it, eh? That's exactly it. And... I've always been a little bit worried about my knives because you never really know. You, you do the temp and all the rest of it. You test it with your hardening files and all that. And, you, and you, you know you've got it between 60 and 65 Rockwell, but will it hold an edge and all the rest of it? Well, a guy, Mark, has brought a couple of my knives off me. And when he picked up his second one, he said that he bought the first one for his missus. And his missus has done, she worked, they work on a farm. She's... Oh, I can't remember exactly what he said, but she's dressed out, butchered up, and skinned a whole bunch of animals. Um, and he's done, I think he's done a deer or two. And basically, they have only just put an, a new edge on it. So obviously, it, they hold an edge well. They stay sharp, which is pretty cool. And he said it didn't take much for him to put another edge on it and get it back razor sharp. So I was like, whew, <laughs> that was a big weight off my shoulders knowing that that they that the steel is holding an edge, so that my tempering, my tempering is, is spot on. My um for my heat treating is spot on, and obviously my sharpening process is is pretty good as well. So to, for, to keep an edge after, I think it was probably a couple of months. Yeah, it would have been would have been two to three months between him getting his, his second knife, and he had only just done it the weekend before he picked up his one. Um, he had only just put in his first edge on it. So yeah. They work. They stay sharp. So pretty happy with that. Denny, welcome along, brother. Don't forget to uh, smash that like button as you're coming through, guys, from your raid. Um, yeah, don't mind if you don't stay long, but just make sure you uh, whack, that, uh, whack that like button on your way through. Much appreciated. No, I wouldn't have a clue what the uh, Rockwell is in Brennell. Um... I've got a uh, dime bag. I've got um, I've got the Rockwell hardness files, and they go from something like is it forty? What have I got? 45, 50, 55, 60s. Yeah, so it must be 45, 45, 50, 55, 60, and sixty-five hardness files. Basically, once you've tempered your blade, 
you run those across it, and once they dig in, you know that that's where your hardness is. And generally, my 65 will barely, barely dig in. My 60 just skates across, and my 65 will just leave a mark, just. So I know that I'm getting my hardness between 60 and 65 on the Rockwell, um, which is pretty, pretty spot on. It's pretty much where I need to be with the um, high carbon steel. You don't want to be too hard with that, otherwise it'll crack, and it, like if you drop the knife, they'll just break and shatter. So temper it, then temper the edge. Could be fun. Yeah, the only thing is, you, yeah, maybe with the um, with the saw blades you could uh, mad kiwi. <laughs> Hypothetically, if I was to stab someone <laughs> with any of the knives, would they kill or just injure? Um, <laughs> that's a tricky one. I get myself in trouble depending on what I say. Uh, yeah, they are lethal, bro. They are lethal. Um, my pig sticking knife, the blade's about that long. Uh, my big brute knife's not much shorter. Uh, and then as you know, as you can see from all of these, um, you're talking about a blade that's over 100 mils. So probably probably wouldn't be fatal, but if you got in the right spot, they would definitely bleed out. So, but yeah, we don't use knives for that sort of carry-on, do we? I mean, if you were going pig sticking, you'd definitely grab one of my pig sticking knives that's, that's got the big long blade, um, and you could um, drive that into the pig's heart, piece of cake, not a problem. And it's also got a drop point on it as well, so you can um, you could probably end up butchering out and skinning the pig with that knife as well. It's uh, quite a cool, um, yeah, more of a utility knife as well. Um, you got your mini... Yeah, I've got the mini Rambo knives, or what I call the Hunter, which is the um, drop points. Um, they're quite cool. Yeah, don't play with knives, says Jacob. Um, I'm doing a big a big um, Goldfield-style uh, bowie for Jade, which is gonna should turn out quite nice. Um, sort of sort of styled on the um, styled on the old style of what the what the old gold diggers would have had on their on their side side belts as their everyday carry. Um, not not as basic as the, like the Von Temsky style Bowie. Uh, the handle will be a little bit flashy, but the blade itself is pretty much the same style as the old uh, the old gold miners uh, Bowies. Um, oh, you like that knife digger? Yeah, I've actually it's quite interesting. I've got a lot of um, I've had a lot of interest in the Hunter style. Um, I'm actually doing another one for for Josh Fenson who came in just before who was in the chat, I don't know if he's still in here, he might be lurking while he's um, out having a, a detect. But his missus wants one, and she wants that same, same Hunter-style blade, but a lot sm shorter, and a shorter, more petite, dare I say, it, handle, and she wants it as an everyday carry, so as an EDC, just for work. So I've just designed that up, and she's just picking her handle, handle material, so that'll be a nice wee one, and I actually... What I've designed up has actually come up really well. I really like it. So that might become, it might even become another regular on the um, on the lineup, uh, which would be quite cool. Ricky Thompson, what's your favorite wood to use in the handles? Oh, I like any of the wood, to be honest. Um, walnut's beautiful because it has such a beautiful grain. Um, I did a knife for Josh that had River Totra, and that was a beautiful, beautiful grain timber. Um, Riwa Weera. Or New Zealand honeysuckle, that's quite gorgeous. That's like a um, speckled timber. Um, yeah, anything with a beautiful grain, anything that's got a lovely grain in it, I, I love working. Um, I basically I shape all the handles on the um, on the bench grinder on the on the big belt sander, but then once I've got the main shape, the rest of it is all done by hand. I hand sand the entire handles, and I'll I'll grip it, hold it. So my handles are slightly bigger. They're not a they're not a they're not a factory handle, I guess you'd say. They're not a factory handle. They're not like the mass-produced handles that are all really small and, and slippery and, and don't your hand doesn't grip them really well. These hand the handles on my knives are are slightly oversized, so you can really grip them and they, they sit beautifully in the hand. Um, because I basically I sand, I feel, I sand it back. 
I, I grip it, I hold it until I feel like that handle is just spot on and tickety boo. Once I feel it beautiful in the hand and it balances nice and feels nice, that's when I'm happy and that's when I'll start working back with my sandpapers from from the 120 grit right back up to um, 600, 800, even to 1200 with some of those other other timbers. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, Ricky, mate, anything that's got a beautiful grain. I, I'm a builder by trade. I love working with timber. So the steel part of it's quite cool and it's been quite new, but I, I love the handles. I get excited when I come up to doing handles. It's like I want to rush the rest of it through so I can start working on the handles. <laughs> I'm terrible like that. Um, would they work for sticking pigs? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Bowie would, Denny, um, if you did a long enough um, blade. You just, I wouldn't make it as wide. I'd make it a just a long blade with a, with a, with a drop point. Um, the only thing is, is you do, you want a point that goes like that rather than the, the drop point. The drop point gives a bit of a hook. So it possibly wouldn't be as easy to direct the knife exactly where you're going. Um, but you could pretty much stick a pig with most blades that are long enough. Um, I mean, I've seen a guy use a machete before that's just had a sharpened down point on the end of the machete. So, yeah, I mean, as long as the blade's long enough and sharp enough on the point, you can pretty much use anything. Um, I'm about to go out detecting now that it's dark. Sweet, Jake. Oh, I hope you get something. Yeah, Purple Heart was, that was nice. Um, but again, it's just a color without a nice grain. It, I mean, that one there is Purple Heart and it is nice, but I, I love character and I want to, I want to, save me pennies and get some nice burl wood really nice burl wood i reckon some of those burls that they do over in the states are just phenomenal um oh there you go denny have you ever tried using burls uh i've got a big one of pahuta kawa wondering if it would be worth yeah pahuta kawa i've done i've done two knives now with pahuta kawa pahuta kawa is a beautiful timber to use um because it's a hardwood so um as long as it's been kiln dried or has been has sat for a wee while and a Pahuta Kawa Burl, man, flat, that would be beautiful. Um, not dark here, Mike. <laughs> not down south, it's not. Sun's still out. Yeah, it's not too bad. Where are you, Jake? Uh, Jake J? Where are you that it's dark? Yeah, it's still light here, where I am. Um, I've heard of using car keys. Oh, um, to make Damascus steel, Xerxes? Is that what you're talking about? Um, have you ever made a bone handle from a hobbit's leg? <laughs> Rob Random. <laughs> How's it, brother? I should have read the name before I read that question. <laughs> I knew you would ask that. How's it, my bro? Welcome along, buddy. Um, no, I haven't used a bone from a hobbit yet. I haven't actually come across a hobbit's leg yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to see you too, mate. Good to see you too. Um, for sticking pigs, oh, I didn't think you'd get deep enough, mate. I guess if you clipped an archery in the in the neck, you'd probably be okay with car keys. But yeah, you got to go wee ways in. You've got to go at least at least yay yay far in to to actually touch anything decent in a in a um, in a pig. So yeah, oh, so it's dark up north. Oh well. I guess the furthest down south here you do get it as um lost his knife on the way. Oh, poor chap. I guess if you um yeah, drove the key in far enough you'd probably be okay. Um or if you went into the throat, into the throat, cut the main the main vein through the, the jugular, you'd probably be able to do it that way. Dalton, would you be interested? Uh I'm not really buying coins anymore, mate. Um I've got, I'm going to be getting back into buying damaged toned and milk spotted silver so I can start pouring again. But I've sort of given away the whole coin collecting. In fact, if anything, I'm going to probably go through my safe um, in the next couple of weeks and pull out all my collections, put them together and start listing them and getting rid of them. Um, ACC is not paying us. In fact, we haven't had a payment from ACC yet. We've been seven weeks with no pay. I've been seven weeks with not being able to provide for my family at the moment. 
So it's been a bit frustrating. So we're in the process of looking for some things to sell and my coins are going to be the first ones to go. Um, so yeah, and then possibly once I've done the coins, if ACC haven't come to the picture, I think they're going to be sorting it all now next week, but we're still a long ways behind and I may, I may even sell all my gold coins if it gets to it. <laughs> Don't want to, but hey, I can always buy more later on down the track when when I'm back up on my, on my feet, but ACC just have not been not been playing the game that well at the moment. So still pretty light and done as yeah, it will be, mate. It will be. Um, yeah, Mad Kiwi's down in Gore. He's just a bit further down than you, and he says it's light as. I mean, I'm looking out the window, and it's sort of that dust, just just getting on dusk. So ACC does suck, digger mite. I'll drink to that one. <laughs> Hopefully they're not listening. <laughs> Right, I'm about all talked out and I've been waffling on for flip 85 minutes. Time goes well, fast when you're having fun, doesn't it? Thanks for that, Johnny. Give you another one into the end of stream. Oh, and there goes Ricky as well. Thanks, buddy. Don't go taking pity on me, guys. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> But I'm saying that, if you keep an eye out on the uh, Facebook pages, there might be uh, some cheap gold going. I've got a few half sovereigns and some and some one tenths that I'm probably going to put up. I'll probably keep my full sovereign, being that I found that metal detecting, being my only only sovereign I've ever found. I will probably keep that. But other than that, yeah, we'll um, see how it all goes. Right. What do you reckon we, uh, oh, Mad Kiwi? Thank you so much. Oh, Jade, stop it. Use guys. You're a legend, Jade. Thank you so much. I'll put, put a, a few entries in there for you, mate. You really don't have to. What are you sending me pictures of there, Jacob? I keep getting these little notifications coming up on my phone that you're sending through pictures. I'll have a look at those when I um, finish the stream, bro. Hey, nah, Dalton, mate, just being here as long as you smash that like button and just being here, mate, is all, all I want, mate. That is, that's awesome. <laughs> Jade wins, says Mad Kiwi. Well and truly. Um... Yeah, bro, no, hey, just being on the stream, Dalton, is more than enough for me. It's just, I do these things to to interact with you guys and just chat and all the rest of it. And it's just a way of keeping you guys up to date, um, especially when I can't get videos out and all the rest of it. I do have another one coming out with um, metal detecting. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's just on the last three, three things I did metal detecting. Um, so I'm going to make up a bit of a compilation video. I'll probably actually, I might sit down and do that tonight and I might try and get, get that loaded up tomorrow before I head away. And then it'll be the gold video. So, and then I've got, I'm still working on the big truck video. Um, that's that's a pretty big epic one at the moment. Um, yeah, got a lot of video and photos to work through on that one. That's been, that's a massive video. And then I'm going to load up at the end of next week, I'm going to load up. Or probably, no, it'd probably be middle of the week. I might actually video it while I'm up up on the coast. Uh, I'll do a, um, I will make up a push to 4K uh, giveaway video. So that'll be coming up soon too. So keep an eye out for that. Um, J Metal Detecting. Oh, Denny, thank you. We'll put you in the drawer as well. Legendary. Holy, sexy, mate. Denny. I think everybody's feeling sorry for me. <laughs> Thanks, Denny. Got your name in there. And sexy, mate. Thank you so much. That is legendary. It's going to get you a few, a few in the drawer, buddy. 
Thank you so much. Still sending. I'll get another raid. Where are we raiding from this time, David? J Metal Detecting, David Raid, Janelle Sonder Raid, Doug Harding. It's where you're coming from, guys. Silver Shocker. Who sent you over this time, guys? Whose channel's sending you over? Those kids are spitting images of you. <laughs> Especially, ah! Oh, get him out. Um, we're back. Oh, you back from um, another found it buried raid, is it? Found it buried again, Doug Harding. Oh, awesome, guys. I'll make sure you smash that like button as you're coming through. The raid. Yeah, another raid. Woohoo! Yay! Oh my! It's a. Oh my! That's a lot of names. It is SkyQuest. I'm trying, struggling to keep up with them all. So make sure you smash that like button, guys, as you're coming through. Much appreciated. Beto D, welcome, guys. And again, guys, Taylor Evans, all you guys that have come through from the raid from Found It Buried, I will come back and I will find your channels and I will sub to you. So thanks heaps for coming in, guys. Um, pig dog, pig dog, welcome, buddy. Snuck in there at the end. Mike P. Page. Oh, we've got multiple raids going on. Crikey. Oh, you know, found a buried and Mike P., aren't they? Yeah, sweet. Oh, I hope I get everybody's name. <laughs> Cheers, guys. What is that? It's daddy juice. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Everybody that's come over on the raid from uh, Found It Buried, you guys are legends. Thank you so much. Um, just make sure you smash that like button as you come through on your way out, guys. Much appreciated. I hope we're not uh, stealing you from uh, Found It Buried's uh, live stream. Uh, I hope it's been, yeah, I hope he's either done or you've got two screens going or something. So, not NZ. No, none of the things are in NZ. Thanks so much, Doug, though. Much appreciated. Oh, first bloke I've ever donated to. You're a legend. Oh, mate, Denny, you're the legend. Thank you so much. Struggling to keep up with you guys. In fact, I'm shortening all your names as well. <laughs> So where are you from, Denny? Your last name. David, can I please check to see if we are still connected? I will, David. Um, I'll, I'll double check yours as well. Um, in fact, I'll go through everybody and check everybody because there's a lot of names that are popping up here that, that I remember, but I'm not seeing notifications. You know what YouTube's like at the moment. YouTube's just shocking they've um yeah they do these purges and things like that and you next thing you know you're not actually subscribed to all the people that you used to be so thank you so much janelle much appreciated uh spud lee plenty of bush down under for you mike p <laughs> found a buried your awesome christmas series. we oh you're finished wasn't sure if we would catch it Oh, yeah, no, I, I tend to waffle on way too much uh, Founder Buried, so <laughs> waffle on about this, that, and the other thing, and nothing nothing at all, so it's been going for, what, 94 minutes, and yeah, it's been, yeah, I'm surprised everybody's still hanging around, I thought everybody would be absolutely bored with me. <laughs> um, hey, guys, if you are new to this live stream and all the rest of it, and you're thinking about coming back to to another one, much, much appreciated, and I really look forward to seeing you again. But just a, a little thing of what we're going to do now at the end of the stream is I do an end of stream draw. So obviously you've seen me frantically writing names down for Super Chats. So we do one draw for Super Chats. We also do another draw for members and patrons. And at the moment we're doing uh, tokens. So the winner of each of those draws gets a token and they go into a draw for a custom knife made by me. So the first one to five tokens at the moment is going to get the 
uh, the knife. So um, yeah, so $300 knife will be up for grabs and that's what I do every end of, um, at end of every stream. So if you wanna support my channel a bit more and you wanna get in with the possibility of winning a knife, head over to Patreon and sign up for Patreon. Patreon would be the better option than being a YouTube member. Um, YouTube members, you don't get that much in the way of perks, to be completely honest with you, other than this. Um, Patreon, you get Patreon-only videos, you get first, first watches of all my videos before they go onto YouTube, um, and it's only a couple of bucks more. Um, you can get into Patreon as, as cheap as five, five bucks US per month. Um, and it gives you a whole heap more perks. And then you, you also, you go into, you go into these cool, cool end of stream drawers. So if you are thinking about coming back and you want to sub to my channel and, and support it a bit more, that's another option. Just another option. But I reckon we should do, oh, can't reach out with that arm. Still going to remember I'm a bit of a cripple with my arm and can't do everything. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Jade's just put up the Patreon link. Thank you so much, mate. I think we're pretty much the Waffle on means talk on. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, sorry. It's not like the food. It's not a waffle on. It's when, I, when I waffle on, I just talk way too much. So we will go with the members and Patreons. We'll do that little draw first. So these are all the guys that support me, just that little bit extra. And for that, guys... I very much appreciate it. These guys are all legends. Mm. I wonder what getting. Do you want to do the drawings again? Yeah. Do you want to pull them out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, smash the crispy thumb, says Can Bud. Cheers. Or oh, do you want to do this one, Peyton? Then you want to do the big one with these. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Alrighty, so we've got patrons and members in here. And again, thank you guys. You want to pull one out without looking in there? Oh, okay, who have you got? Uh, dead possum. Dead possum. Congratulations, <laughs> mate. Um, he was before. Are you still here, dead possum? <laughs> He's dead, says, says Vanessa. He is, yes. There you go, mate, dead possum. So, Patreon members, I am putting your name on the diary so you have one token so well done matey so you're uh one token towards a brand new knife hey how cool is that so well done buddy well done i'll just empty these guys paul casper says congrats janelle says congratulations everybody says congratulations that's awesome Right, man, I've got a fair few of these to fold up. My goodness, you guys have just spoiled me rotten tonight. Can't thank you, can't thank you enough, eh? It is, yep, Brax is just gonna do this draw for me. Yep, four more to go, dead possum. Man, there's a lot of names in here. These guys have been so generous. Dalton Crave, look close at my profile. Crispy, look close up at my profile. I sure will, mate. Why do I possibly know you? Mm -hmm. BH Ringer, what are you doing? Looking. You looking? Mm -hmm. ah. I think I might guess it. Because I think it's a he. Yeah. Mike P says, put me in. Did you do a super chat, mate? Mind you, you guys did do a rain and got a whole raid and got a whole people. Paul Casper, it was all found and buried. Oh, we got a bit of a bit of competition on here between uh, Mike P and uh, found and buried, have we? <laughs> Crikey G, there's a lot of names going in here, bro. Who do you think it's going to be? Um, 
There's a whole heap of names, mate. Yeah, there is. I have my bet on someone. You have a bet on someone? But I don't know how to say Brax that. has this uncanny thing of whispering in my ear who he thinks is going to win. And then about nine times out of ten, he does. Well, it's 50-50 out of two people. 50-50 out of two people. Oh. Hey guys, so what do you reckon? Do we put do we put Mike P in, put me in and found it buried in this in the barrel for setting up the big uh, the big raid and sending everybody over here? What's people's thoughts? Give me a yes or no in the chat. What do you reckon? Give them give them both an entry. Jade says yep. Yeah. Mad Kiwi says yep. Yeah. Put me. <laughs> put me says robot. Yes, yes. Oh, that looks like a pretty, pretty unanimous that one, isn't it? Maybe says David. Sure. Yep. Yep. Oh, well, I haven't seen a no. So, right. Found it buried. Hey, beautiful. And we'll go, Mike P. Right. Asking for, the, yeah, tried that. We've we've done that before, and he um, they didn't work. <laughs> right, I'm gonna give these a, yeah, lotto numbers. We've we've tried the lotto numbers before. <laughs> we've got the whole family around here tonight. Right, I'm actually gonna put the lid on, and I'm gonna give it a jolly good shake up because there are a lot of names in there. Money talks, Raiders walk. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen a notification from you, Rob Random. Have you posted any videos recently? I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a um, notification for you pop up for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. okay. Here we go, guys. Okay, well there you go. You pick it out. Not looking, not looking. Keep it in this, just above the thing. Here we go, guys. Give us a drum roll, drum roll. Got one? Yep. Okay, oh. open it up over here. Can you pronounce it? <laughs> Denny. And I'm not going to pronounce your, uh, your last name, mate, because I will probably insult you and pronounce it wrong but Denny well done brother you are on the diary he says yeah so Denny is it Perkovich did I get that right Denny Perkovich Denny yes you did yep yep excellent <coughs> Well, Denny Perkovich, congratulations, mate. It might mean you might have to come back to a few more of my live streams, though, <laughs> so that you can, um, so that you can get a few more tokens on your on your um, on your name. So there you go, guys. Names are there. Super chats, members. So we've got Jay's Adventures has got two tokens, Denny has got one, Digger Mike has got two, and Dead Possum has one. Congratulations, guys. And obviously, guys, just keep coming back, doing what you're doing. Really appreciate the support, guys. I really do. Um, it helps this channel grow. And obviously, we'll, we'll make these way, way more regular. Um, also, guys... And I know a lot of you guys in the States um, and overseas, what time, if I was to do a mid-week live stream, 
because obviously I'm going to be home for a few months once I have surgery. If I was to do a midweek live stream for, say, American time Wednesday night, would that suit? Or is, is, like, is, during, the, is during the week annoying for live streams? Because um, I know I could, I could sit down at about 11, 10 or 9 o'clock here in the morning on Thursday morning and I know I'd be getting you guys uh, overseas at between, yeah, Wednesday evening at some stage. Um, there's 2.45 there at the moment, Paul. Is that, yeah, that's AM, isn't it? Yep, yep. Because I know you guys, I mean, it's absolutely legendary that you guys stay up so late and then jump onto my live stream. I just, I'm in awe of you guys. You just, you're either mad or <laughs> or loyal and it, it's awesome and I, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, if I could give back to you guys and do a stream that's a little bit more suitable hours, um, let me know what would what would work. Um, I might do some do some. Um, like, where are you guys? Fire fire out some. Um, so where are you? Like, what state are you in? If you're in um, in the US, or uh, are you from the UK? Or um, midday here gets most crispy. Okay, yeah, because I used to I used to go at about ten o'clock on a Sunday morning, and that seemed to get a lot of people in from all over the world, and sort of seemed to still work quite well with New Zealand. Um, but the Sunday nights work best for New Zealand here because I get way more people from New Zealand here. Um, so we've got Michigan, California, Alabama, Washington. So we've got a lot of people from the states in here at the moment. Um, <gasps> robot one two three. You've got the same time as us. It's nine nine forty seven here as well in my place. <laughs> uh, Texas. Um, okay, so we're we're talking. Yeah. Okay. So what I've got to do is, is I'll do um. What I'll do is I'll do some research and I'll do some time zone swapping. And yeah, I've got you, Dalton. Don't panic. I'll do some times time zone swapping and yeah, maybe. Maybe once I've had my surgery and I'm sort of stuck at home feeling miserable, I'll do a midweek stream to catch all you guys in, in the States and get you at a better time. And obviously after dinner would be way better for you guys. I don't I wanna I don't wanna put a um put a put a live stream up smack when you're having dinner. <laughs> that's just silly. Um so yeah, yeah, no, that's cool. We can um we can sort that. Uh cheers, Jade. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's six to one half dozen, Jacob. It depends on, like, I'll go through this email and I'll look at where everybody is, um, is from and I'll take the bulk of the states because I know there's different time zones and all the rest of it and I'll find out what, what works. But I think I'll probably get away with anything between nine and midday morning here. Uh, the day on a Thursday, we'll get, probably get later on a Wednesday night. Um, yeah, and just hopefully I'm not competing with uh, too many other bigger channels and I might be able to set something up for you guys overseas. That'd be way cool, way cool. Hope all goes well with the surgery. Oh, thanks, Found Buried. Um, it is what it is. I think it's all keyhole now um, and it's only a tear. I'm not having like complete um, fixing the tendon back onto my bone or anything. It's not torn right off. It's just a small tear. So it's just a just a keyhole surgery, I think. Still sounds like it's blimmin' painful. Um, so I'm not looking forward to it, but hey, is what it is. Is what it is. Um, right. Thank you. I'd miss the morning streams. Yeah, but um, Xerxes, I'd still do my Sunday night. My Sunday night would be my main main um, catch up stream so I'd still do my main weekly one and then maybe every second second Wednesday or Thursday morning I do one for all the overseas guys to do a big catch up there as well so I can I can catch overseas um, while everybody's at work here in New Zealand um, and then obviously we still do our catch up on a Sunday night when it suits everybody else a bit better um, or Saturday night whatever I try and try and keep them Sunday nights they are a wee bit better Sunday nights most people are at home 
come back from being away all weekend if they are, um, and all the rest of it. Thanks, Mr. MJ. Much appreciated. Any any time there's sticky. <laughs> well and truly found it buried. Well and truly. Hey, thanks for your well wishes, guys. Much appreciated. Um, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna boost. Awesome life tonight, bro. Yeah. Cheers, matey, and uh, have fun with that new Equinox tomorrow, uh, Digger Mike. That'll be fun. And if you want any uh, want any tips, just because a yell, mate, I'll happily. Um, well, we've got to catch up anyway. I've got a, I've got that coin for you from last week. Um, catch up with you and show you how to do the settings. I'm still a bit of a newbie at mine. I sort of pretty much turn it on and swing it. <laughs> Once you got it set up, it's mint though. It's uh, pretty easy. Um, Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Founder Buried and Mike P for the uh, raid. That was awesome. That uh, really livened things up. <laughs> it was very cool. We've still got 30 in the house at the moment. So, guys, don't forget to smash that like button on your way out. That'd be much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to me already, if you feel that way inclined, that'd be much appreciated. And don't forget, guys, if you do want to support me more and you want to get into this um, end of stream giveaways and all the rest of it, don't forget to hook up and uh, have a look at my Patreon. Uh, there's quite a few videos on there and quite a, quite a bit of stuff that's not on not on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much, guys. Your generosity has just blown me away. You've, you've really made my night. And I um, hope you're all well. And until the next one, guys. Bye. Happy hunting. All righty, guys. Man, you're still chatting away. <laughs> Rob Random, keep going. Bye. Very brave. <laughs> See you, Thanks, bro. Rob. Go away. <laughs> Bye. See you, guys.